especially if you're a newer agent, you don't have any deals, you need to do everything. I mean, you need to do everything you do to get to that first deal. Work every lead from every angle, try every gadget, every shiny penny, do it all, right? But at the end of the day, when the dust settles and you start closing up a couple deals, you've got to narrow it down to what your top two or three things are and really commit and go all in and be willing to sacrifice the deals you're losing on those other 15 things because everything works. You know, they say, you know, the, the, you know, if you really want to do stuff, you got to work for it. All right, so I know everybody wants to automate everything, make everything easy and just like, you know, create like an ATM where money just flows into your account and you do nothing kind of deal. But that's not how this works. This is a very um, sweat equity business. You've got to put the work in. You have to put the work in for all those individual conversations. You guys, to get to the level that you want to in, in your real estate business, you've got to have thousands of one-on-one -on -one conversations with people in your market. Right, and that's gonna take you years to do. But you've got to start the process and you've gotta have thousands of one-on-one -on -one conversations with people in your market, number one. And that takes a lot of time, work, money, energy. Like, um, you can't buy your way into market share here. Even if you bought your way into market share, like bought a bunch of Zillow zip codes and put a bunch of billboards up and paid a bunch of Facebook ads and stuff, when you did generate all those leads, nothing's gonna happen there until you actually have conversations with those people. So even when you spend all that time, money, and energy to try to acquire all that market share and you acquire all that data, you still gotta talk to those people one-on-one -on -one before anything's gonna happen. And so we're right back to just sweat equity, right? No matter, no matter how you slice it up, you've gotta put the hours in to have all those one-on-one -on -one conversations. Same thing with the weekly email. You've gotta put in the time to really make that thing special and, and different and unique, or it's not gonna work. It's just, it's just gonna kinda of be average, and they, they get plenty of average, right? They don't want average from you. They want above average. They wanna to get to know you. They wanna know what's happening, and, and you know, in terms of like content, they don't want national statistics, right? Like here's things that they want local stuff. They wanna know what's going on in your local market, right? Price per square foot, listings, inventory, supply, demand, all that stuff. They wanna know about local restaurants. A new local restaurant opens up, go there, eat, do a weekly email, say, I went to this new place, bam, here's what I had, it was amazing, the waiter was great, um, reply back for your chance to win a $50 gift card there. Um, you know, giving your experiences and trying to make these, these emails very engaging. Also like, Small, uh, uh, very few words, big font. I use, I use big font and small words because I want people to open it up and just like, boom, get all this value within like three seconds and then be gone. If you do like small print, novel type stuff, they're gonna open up one of your emails, never open another one or unsubscribe because people don't have time to read like a novel of stuff. Listen, there's new listings every day. So, um, honestly, you could put out an email, an email every day, you know, with just that. Here's the new listings today. You could be the new listing uh, agent, whereas every week you just have like a list of the new listings for that week in your area. People love breaking news type stuff. New listings is breaking news. This is a new listing in the market, or a new pending, or a new closed sale. People love that kind of stuff, right? And that's something that keeps people engaged or they open it up every week because they want to see what those new listings are. They want to see if what they're looking for has hit the market or if something in their subdivision has hit the market this week. And they're going to pay attention and stuff like that. Um, so that's really good. Um, but yeah, the, the email is something that it's easy. It takes you 30 minutes a week or so and you can scale because it doesn't matter if there's 500, 5,000, 50,000 people there, it's only it's still only gonna take you 30 minutes. And it's a, way, it's a safety net on the back of your business that really doesn't let a lot slip through the cracks. Like when you show a buyer and they ghost you, right? This has happened to me so many times. Show a buyer, they ghost you, you know, you thought it was going good, they ghost you. Three years later, five years later, eight years later, I'll get a call from that buyer, right? And now they're ready to buy, you know, and I just never, I just never took them off my weekly email. I don't take anybody off the weekly email and they continue to get the email. You know, I have like, I'll sell a property 
this happened to me earlier this year. There was two listings I got. It was a uh, it was a one point three million dollar house. We're closing in a couple weeks, and a, a seven hundred thousand dollar condo that I closed months ago. I got them both about the same time, and they both called me and was like, "We're ready to sell" or whatever. And I sold them those properties eight years. It was eight years ago. It was like one of them was eight years, and the other one was like seven years or something. I went back and looked, and I have had zero contact with those clients ever since. I haven't called and checked on them. No Christmas cards. Just the weekly email, right? And then when the time came, they called me to sell those properties. So it really put it really puts you in a really power position. Um, as far as nurturing goes, it does all that heavy lifting for you because again, you're shut, you're giving your personality in these emails, and they feel like they are still very connected to you, um, even though it's on a mass basis. Um, and, and and two, one thing to note is that when you're in the deal with these clients giving them the best service uh, possible, like going above and beyond, like being Johnny on the spot and uh, super dependable, like keeping them updated, making sure the transaction goes smooth. That's the best closing gift you can give your clients. And really, that's why these clients came back to me because it was like we were talking about earlier, Joseph, how um, you know once people love you, they're never going to use another agent. They're just going to use you. They just want to use you. This is a prime example. You know, this is eight years later. I never called a check on them, but they came back to me, right? And it wasn't because I didn't want to check on them. It's because I got too many clients and too many things going on. I can't. You know, you get to a point where you can't call everybody. Right, and so the email gives you an opportunity to, to stay very closely connected, you know. But you got to spend time on it. Why would we spend money on ads to get fake emails when we can click a button to get a list? You're gonna get the, you gotta get the list either way. So with with Red X, you can just click and get the list, and these are the exact people you want to do business with. Right, you got a time block, some time to call these people anyway. You know, to me, it just makes more sense. You know, because all you're trying to do is develop a list and then find time to call them. So for me, instead of developing an expensive list of people who, you know, are putting fake emails out there, I'd rather just pay the cheapest amount of money for the exact people I want to do business with, the exact price range, the exact type of property, and just call those people and make friends with them. Right. So that's kind of my thing. But listen, I would do both. You know, I would do both. I would, I mean, especially if you're a newer agent, you don't have any deals, you need to do everything. I mean, you need to do everything you do to get to that first deal. Work every lead from every angle, try every gadget, every shiny penny, do it all, right? But at the end of the day, when the dust settles and you start closing up a couple deals, you've got to narrow it down to what your top two or three things are and really commit and go all in and be willing to sacrifice the deals you're losing on those other 15 things because everything works. Right. Let's say 20 things work, but you need to narrow down to three and concentrate there. You got to say, I'm okay with losing the business that I'm not going to get from these 17 things because I'm not doing those things anymore. I'm okay with sacrificing that so I can go all in here because I know that this is the bread and butter. You know, that's the kind of, but right now you kind of just do the 20 things because you just want to just get there, you know, right. and do a deal. So that's my thoughts. I don't think that the lead thing is the most efficient for real estate, you know, because it's all funneling back to a conversation anyway that has to be had, you know, and I just think they're too expensive for bad data at the end of the day, you know, but people do close deals off of them. And as a new agent, you should go down that rabbit hole. People like hardworking people, you know, like, hey, I work at the whatever down here and I'm, I'm doing real, I'm trying to get my name, you know, I'm trying to get my real estate career going as well. Like people like that kind of stuff. People like the underdog, hard worker, you know, stuff. And people are scared to say they're part-time and stuff like that. No. Yeah, because it's like, you don't want to seem like, because I always think if I tell somebody I work at the hospital, they're going to be like, oh, you can't dedicate time to me. No, 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 no. Listen, it's not about that. The, the only reason they're going to say something like that is, is if they're going to, you're going to think that that's the real excuse, but really the fact is they don't feel comfortable with you. You haven't made them feel comfortable. And then they're using that as the reason, but that's, it, yeah. but that's really not the reason. The reason yeah. is because you weren't good at your communication to them right that that you know that you can have like if you communicated them correctly um, that you're here for them you're gonna make it go smooth like you know the hospitals like whatever like you know like right. I mean it's uh, it's all about how you talk to them 
you know right. but don't, but don't let them trick you into thinking that that's the real excuse that's kind of like that's kind of like sellers that say oh I, I picked this other agent because they're brokerage that's not true that's not true at all they just didn't like that agent they just didn't like you right I mean, that's that's what the real truth is. They didn't like you enough to pick you. Right. They like this other agent. They like the way they talk. They like the way they carried themselves. It wasn't because of the brokerage. Now, when NAR did that study about friend in the business, number one reason why people choose a real estate agent, brokerage as the reason why they picked their uh, agent was under one percent, was less than one percent. Um, yeah, like people picking a brokerage or whatever the reason is, sometimes you got to see through some of this stuff. That's like when you're prospecting and they say, oh, I might do something in six months, call me then. They're just telling you what you want to hear most of the time. Right. They're not really, their intentions aren't really to sell in six months. They're just kind of telling you what you got to hear to, to get you off the phone and then they ghost you. They don't answer the phone in six months or they don't, whatever. You know, and, and it's like, yeah. you got to understand, you know, their people are nice and they don't want to hurt your feelings, you know? And it's all about communication, you know? And them feel, feeling good about you. So just, if you're a good person, right? And you can communicate that to the people you're talking to, that you're just good people, that's that's when you're gonna start really winning, you know? We start talking to people like they're family. Right. You know, like next time you talk to your mom, dad, or brother, or cousin, or whatever, um, kind of pay attention to how that conversation is going and how comfortable they are with you and how comfortable you are with them. And the speed of your voice, how relaxed your body is, and just the whole nine yards, your tone, really pay attention to that. And try to emulate that exact communication to your prospects. Because if you notice when you talk to your prospects and you're talking to your parents, it's two different tones. Two different styles. Right. You know? Yeah. And like if you if you can if you can if you can make the, the way you talk to your parents, if you can take that and talk to all your prospects like that, I'm telling you, that's it.